John chapter number 20, we'll begin reading verse number 19. The Bible says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Let's pray, Father. We bless your holy name. We're thankful, Lord, for this day that has befallen us. It's a lovely day, but we're thankful, Lord. It's a day where we can come and worship you in the Lord's house in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for the blessings of the week, and the blessings of the day all undeserved but all greatly appreciative and Lord we come this morning just Lord uh, as humbly as we know how thanking you for your goodness towards us and thanking you for allowing us to be in the house of God now Father I pray that Lord you would uh, certainly put a hedge about us we certainly plead for the presence of the Lord we pray that Lord you'd manifest yourself in a powerful and a wonderful way God, speak to hearts. We pray for Holy Ghost conviction. We pray for anybody here today unsaved, that today would be the day of their salvation. God, we pray for the saints of God. You'd edify them. You'd encourage them. Lord, you'd lift them up. They've been beat upon by the world and by the flesh and by the devil. God, I pray that today they'd get some victory. They'd get some strength. And Lord, I pray you do great mighty things around this place today. Father, we certainly do pray you'd be glorified and magnified in it all. Now, Father, use this unworthy vessel, and Father, we'll bless you and praise you for what you do, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. We find this text takes place on resurrection morning. Jesus has gotten up from the grave. Hallelujah. By the way, uh, uh, he's still not there. What a blessing. Huh? He got up resurrection morning, and uh, earlier in the text you'll find that uh, women came to anoint his body for the burial because he didn't have a proper burial. Uh, only to their surprise, when they got there, there were two men standing there uh, in shiny white apparel, said, uh, Why seek ye Jesus? Uh, why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here, uh, for he's risen, as he said. Uh, 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 later we find that uh, uh, Mary's there and she's all tore up uh, 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 and uh, uh, Jesus appears to her and her supposing him to be a gardener says, Sirs, where have you laid him? Uh, and uh, 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 as he's communing with her, uh, she's hearing the words, uh, but she's not paying much attention uh, until he says, Mary, uh, well, I'm glad for the day he called my name, aren't you? Uh, and when uh, he called her by name, she knew that voice. Uh, and hey, uh, 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 he uh, uh, said, Touch me not, for I have not yet fully ascended unto my Father. Uh, said, Go tell my disciples. Uh, tell them I'll see them uh, uh, there in Galilee. Uh, and that brings us to our text. Uh, uh, we find some things in this, uh, uh, these two verses I want to draw your attention to. Can I say, first of all, notice the panic. Uh, Notice the panic. Uh, in verse number 19, it said the same day at evening, uh, being the first day of the week. By the way, it's why we worship on Sunday, not Saturday. Uh, uh, this isn't the Sabbath day. Uh, uh, this is the Lord's day, uh, the first day of the week. Uh, and it says when the, the, when the doors were shut, uh, where the disciples were assembled uh, for fear of the Jews. Uh, uh, you see, when uh, 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 Jesus had been crucified... Uh, the Jews sent out a decree uh, that any of his followers, uh, 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 if they continued uh, in the same verbiage he had, uh, they would be next. Uh, and his disciples uh, knew there were hits out for them. Uh, and they knew the Jews uh, uh, sought to kill them as well. Uh, and they were all uh, uh, shut into this room, uh, 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 fearful for their very lives. Uh, can I say, you and I say we've suffered for Jesus. We've never suffered for Jesus. Uh, we've never had to face that. Uh, 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 we faced a little scorn when we was open during COVID. Uh, uh, but can I say, uh, we never have ever feared for our lives uh, uh, because of our relationship with Jesus. Uh, they're in a panic. Mm -mm. I'm glad uh, the panic won't keep the Lord away. 
Uh, notice, if you will, the person of the Lord. Uh, it said uh, when they were uh, assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst. What a blessing, huh? Uh, in the midst of their panic, here he came. Uh, showed up in the midst. Uh, and then I want you to notice what he offered them. Look at the, at the peace he offers in verse 19. And saith unto them, Peace be unto you. I don't know about you. I've never had a panic attack, but if I ever had one, I sure would like some peace, wouldn't you? Uh, they were panicking for their life. And Jesus comes in and says, Peace be unto you. Huh? Notice the presentation, verse number 20. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Hmm? He proved he was who he said he was. Hmm? Uh, aren't you glad? How many times has he proved to you that he's who he said he was? Hmm? Hmm? So I've never seen his nail prints, and I've never seen his sign. Uh, I haven't either, but I've seen him do a whole lot of things. Hmm? Uh, uh, he's, he showed me some verses and then uh, proved them to be fact in my life. Huh? But then notice the permuting or the reversal of the whole situation. Look again in verse 20. He says, Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Notice they're in a panic. They're fearful. But their fear has been turned to gladness. Their sadness to gladness because the Lord showed up. Now notice again in verse number 19, the Bible says, The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. They're in a closed room. Came Jesus and stood in the midst. Now, Brother Ray, the doors are locked. They're sealed. They might even have somebody standing at the door waiting for somebody to knock on it so they can say, Who is it? But all of a sudden, there came Jesus. Brother Brian, he just showed up. Yeah. Hmm? Now, Brother Phil, my little hillbilly pre pre brain can't understand this. Uh, everything's locked, everything's shut. Jesus shows up, but he's in a body. Now, he shows up around here a lot, but we don't see him physically. They did. Hmm? I'd have preached on this thought he just showed up he just showed up huh I'm reminded uh, there was a wicked king that made a golden statue of himself uh, told everybody when the band strikes up you gotta bow down and worship the golden image uh, and there were three Hebrews uh, said no we're not going to do it uh, and they brought him before the king said we're going to strike up the band again uh, and if you bow down this time it'll be well with you uh, but if not I'm going to throw you in a fiery furnace uh, they said king uh, 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 this little paraphrasing but he said king uh, you can strike up the band uh, till the cows come home uh, but we're not bowing down uh, and worshiping your image uh, 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 hey he said who's going to deliver you out of my hand uh, he said our God is well able to deliver us uh, but even if he doesn't uh, we're not bowing down and worshiping uh, uh, you know the story uh, they heated up the furnace uh, seven times hotter than it ever been heated up before uh, hey uh, they found them boys uh, when they opened the door to throw them in the jailers or the guys who had them bound uh, uh, they were consumed in the heat uh, them boys fell over in the furnace uh, a little bit later uh, uh, the king said did we cast out three uh, uh, into the furnace uh, they said yes king uh, he said lo uh, I see a fourth man uh, walking in the midst uh, he looks like the son of God say what happened he just showed up uh, hey uh, they were there in the midst uh, of the greatest storm of their life uh, and Jesus just showed up uh, I'm reminded about Daniel uh, who prayed three times a day uh, hey uh, and some men who hated him uh, and were jealous of him uh, uh, hoodwinked the king to make a decree uh, uh, that if anybody prayed to anybody other than the king uh, they were to be thrown in a lion's den uh, and they made it known to Daniel uh, and Daniel was a Jew uh, but he had a little redneck in him because uh, uh, he went home uh, this time he threw up the window uh, and he, uh, he set his face toward Jerusalem uh, and he prayed uh, uh, like he'd prayed before. Uh, and they came. They arrested him. Uh, 
threw him down in the lion's den. Uh, hey, the king couldn't sleep all night. Uh, hey, first morning watch. Uh, he goes down and yells down into the lion's den. Uh, he said, Daniel, uh, is your God able to deliver thee? Uh, he said, hey, uh, my God had sent an angel uh, and shut the lion's mouth. Uh, hey, who is the angel? I believe the Lord just showed up. Uh, had some sweet fellowship with Daniel uh, down there in the lion's den. Uh, he shut the lion's What happened? He just showed up uh, in the midst of the den. Uh, hey, I'm reminded uh, there was a man named Bartimaeus uh, sitting by the roads uh, just a begging, uh, just hoping for a little bit of money uh, to get a little morsel of meat uh, uh, to help his miserable life. Uh, hey, but he heard... Uh, Jesus was uh, coming down the road, uh, and he been going to cry out, uh, Hey, thou son of God, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, hey, see what happened? Uh, Jesus showed up. Uh, he lay, he was no longer blind, uh, cast off his garment, uh, received his sight. Uh, his faith had made him whole. What happened? Jesus showed up, uh, and he no longer was blind. Uh, he once was blind, uh, but now he sees. Uh, I got to thinking about uh, a woman uh, who had a tattered life, uh, showed up at a well uh, in the middle of the afternoon because uh, she couldn't come in the morning when the other women drew well, uh, or drew water out of the well. Uh, and said she uh, heads to the uh, well. Uh, guess who showed up? Uh, Jesus showed up. Uh, and that woman uh, had the worst testimony in town. Uh, hey, she left her water pot. Uh, because she got a drink of living water. Uh, hey, she went to the town, said, come see a man. Uh, and the whole town came out. Many believed because uh, he just showed up. Uh, I got to thinking about Brother James was uh, singing about it. Uh, hey, uh, there's uh, those uh, disciples. Uh, he told them to cross over the sea. He'd meet them on the other side. Uh, and in the fourth watch of the night, uh, a great storm blows up. Uh, and they're out there towing. Uh, for hours uh, and they're not getting to the shore uh, they think they're going to drown uh, and guess who showed up uh, walking on the water uh, hey uh, got in their boat uh, said peace be still uh, and the waves stopped uh, and the wind stopped uh, and they made it to the other side uh, I got to thinking about uh, a widow woman of name uh, whose only means uh, uh, to support herself was her son uh, and he died uh, and they're on their way to the uh, burial ground. Uh, but guess who showed up? Uh, and he just touched uh, uh, the bier uh, that they had the body on. Uh, and the boy rose up. Uh, and he delivered that boy back to his mama. Uh, all because he showed up. Uh, hey, I got to thinking about a madman uh, that they chained to the tombs. Uh, and he break the tombs. Uh, and he's running around naked, uh, uh, full of demons. Uh, but hey, guess who showed up one day? Uh, they found that old boy clothed and in his right mind. Uh, hey, I got to thinking about uh, two Emmaus disciples after this text. Uh, hey, they're on their way back home. Uh, and they got us talking about Jesus. Uh, and he showed up. Uh, and he preached unto them Christ. Uh, Jesus preaching on Jesus. Uh, but when he broke the bread and blessed it... Uh, their eyes were open, uh, and they knew who he was, because uh, he showed up. Uh, hey, can I say this? Uh, I was minding my own business. Uh, I wasn't uh, looking for God. Uh, I was sitting in the church pew like I did uh, every time the doors were open. Uh, but on the third Saturday night of March, uh, 1974, uh, he showed up. Uh, and it was no longer my granddaddy preaching. Uh, somebody else showed up at night. Uh, and that night, uh, when I went to the altar, I went down a sinner. Uh, got up a saint of God. Because uh, I met the master. Because uh, he showed up. Uh, now, friend, uh, I don't know if it'll be today. Uh, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow. Uh, but you mark her down, neighbor. There's coming today. Uh, he's going to show up. Uh, He's going to step out on the clouds, uh, and the trump of God's going to sound. Uh, there'll be a shout of the archangel. Uh, hey, uh, the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, hey, he's going to show up one day.
I'm glad he just showed up. I was a little worried about this service, but I think he just showed up. Uh, can I give you some things? Who he shows up for? Can I say he shows up for the discouraged? If you're here today and you're discouraged, you're in a good place. Because he shows up to encourage you. Hey, it don't take much to get discouraged in this world. Uh, you turn on the news, you'll get discouraged. You go to the grocery store, you'll get discouraged. You go to the gas station, you'll get discouraged. You just get out in traffic, you're going to get discouraged. huh? If you're not careful, you come to church and somebody come up and shake your hand, they'll discourage the far out of you. Are you listening? There's some of you I don't dare ask how you're doing because I really don't want to know. I want to be encouraged, not discouraged. huh? You can get discouraged. It's not hard to get discouraged. You know what it is hard? It's hard to be encouraged. Uh, there's an attack on your joy because the joy of the Lord's your strength. But I want I got some good news. In the midst of your discouragement, he's liable to just show up. And just like these fellows, your mourning will be turned to joy. <clears throat> Can I say this? He shows up for the diseased. Oh. Uh, well, I can go around the room. There's been folks in here, the doctor said, it's bad. But when the great physician shows up, it'd be all right. Uh, there are five or six of us in here that's had cancer that don't have cancer. Say, what happened? He showed up. Uh, there's, there's folks in here that's had all kinds of sickness. But the Lord showed up. I've got good news for you. You're not going until he says it's your time. But he's liable to just show up and extend your time. Mm. I thought about this. He shows up for the downtrodden. There's a difference between being discouraged and then being on the bottom rung of the ladder where you feel like everybody's walking on you because they are. You're downtrodden. But I'm glad he's a friend that sticks closer to the brother. Paul said, all men forsook me, notwithstanding the Lord stood by me. Huh? He shows up when everybody else walks out. Huh? Uh, he's a faithful Savior. Uh, can I say this? He shows up, hallelujah, for the devoted. Uh, I'm convinced a lot of times he just shows up because of all those that are just faithful. He promised if two or three would gather his name, he'd be in the midst. But can I say, folks that are faithful... And regardless of their circumstances, regardless of the weather, regardless of what's going on in the community, they're just faithful like clockwork. He just shows up to honor their faithfulness. Can I say this? He shows up for the desperate. But Tommy, that's the problem with this day and age. We can't get people desperate. If you ever get somebody desperate, he'll show up for that. See, as long as you think you can handle it, he'll let you try. But when you uh, get to the point where you're finally going to look to him and say, I can't do it. I need you. He'll show up. I streamed a movie last night. I had a cousin tell me about it. It's called The Home Run. She thought I might like it. My baseball playing dames. And it was, it was a good movie. Uh, it's about this, this fella who had it all pro baseball player leading the league in hitting I'm talking to you because you're a baseball guy leading the league in hitting headed to the all-star game he had a little problem he's a drunk and he was a drunk because his dad was a drunk and his dad manipulated him and beat baseball into his brain every time he'd go up to the plate he'd hear his dad call him a sissy because he couldn't hit a pitch so he'd hit the pitch and he was just he was dealing with that demon of, of his nasty childhood and that demon of booze. Well, he's drinking while he's playing. He's drinking all the time. And uh, he makes a mistake in a game. Oh, called him out. He loses it. Looked like Lou Pinella. Anybody remember Lou Pinella? picking up the base and throwing it and all that. Well, he lost it. He's throwing, he's throwing water coolers and everything. Well, when he went back to the 
to the dugout. He's mad. He's angry. Well, they had a, a young boy from a little knothole team being the guest bat boy. Well, he didn't even see him. He hit that young boy, blood coming out of that young boy's nose and everything. So he got suspended for eight weeks. And for those eight weeks, he has to go to a rehab facility, some form of alcohol abuse. And so he heads back home where the little boy was from, who he didn't even realize that his brother had adopted that little boy, to go and make, make a photo op with this little boy and take him all kind of gear, make it all look good for the papers. Well, while he's there, he rents a Corvette, hallelujah, best part of the movie. Huh? And he's drinking while he's driving this Corvette about 150 miles an hour with his brother in it, hits a tractor crossing the road. So there's another black eye on him, so he's not allowed to leave that town. They stay in that town. And, and the only alcohol rehab place in the town was church. They had to go every day. And every day he got to listen to these folks that had addictions, all kinds of things, and how Jesus had delivered them. Yeah. You say, what, all, what are you saying this story for? I'm just giving you the highlights of it all. Every day while he goes, he's drinking. While he's there, he has to coach the Little League team that his brother coached because his brother got hurt in a car wreck. Well, while he's there, coaching, he, he's enjoying coaching these little fellows, but he's drinking. He's drinking all the time. Until one night, he hits rock bottom, Gam. He called for the preacher. He said, I can't stop drinking. And the preacher was able to tell him, no, you can't. But I know somebody can change you. Yeah. And the fellow gets born again. And his life changes. And all the big city lights and everything don't matter anymore. What I'm trying to tell you when you get desperate, Jesus will show up. Hmm? Can I say this? When you're damaged, Jesus shows up. Hmm? Uh, he didn't come to save perfect people. He came to save sinners. And sin will damage you. Uh, the wages of sin is death. And can I say, a lot of times, sin leads to a slow death. But Jesus shows up for the damaged. And he shows up for the doomed. Uh, Send a friend, I got good news. Jesus loves you. And he wants to change your life. He shows up for the doomed. Can I say this? When Jesus shows up, he shows up with pardon in his hand. He come to forgive you and cleanse you from all sin. He'll save you from your sins. Said, preacher, you don't know what I've done. No, but I know what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary for you. He shed his blood for your sin. He'll pardon you from your sins. Jesus shows up with provisions. He said, preacher, I don't have anything. That's okay. He has it all. He will meet your needs, friend. He just shows up to do that. Now, I thought about this. He always shows up with purpose. A lot of times you may be wondering, why am I going through what I'm going through? Well, when Jesus shows up, it'll make sense. Listen, he does all things well. I learned that a long time ago. And there's nothing that befalls you that happened by accident or by chance or that didn't happen without God knowing about it. Now, it's sometimes hard to understand. But when things befall us, God has already equipped us to handle it. Otherwise, he wouldn't allow it to come into our lives. But when he shows up, he shows up with purpose that helps ease the pain of what we went through. When you know that God's in control, you can get through it, friend. Didn't say it'd be easy. Didn't say it'd be wonderful. Didn't say you'd be singing la, la, la all the way. Uh, sometimes you'll take a step forward and three steps backwards. But when he shows up, He'll make certain that you understand the purpose. It was either to better you or to use you to better somebody else. Shows up with purpose. And I thought about this. He always shows up with peace. 
When you've got the peace of God, you can go through anything. Because he's got a peace that passes all understanding. I don't even have to understand it, Brother James. I just need his peace. And when you've got peace, it'll be all right. I know you've heard me tell the story so many times. You can tell it better than me. But the truth of the matter is, was when Miss Annette told me that I had cancer. I'm not some superman, big yellow S on my chest. But what welled up from me, I meant because I had peace. And I told her it'd be all right because it didn't catch God by surprise. That was spoken not to comfort my wife. That was spoken from a heart of peace. I knew it'd be all right. And can I say, it's all right. Three years ago, we're still doing well. Can I say that? It was all right. Why? Because I had peace. Huh? Didn't mean it was always comfortable. Huh? I don't like. I I got to go later in the month back to the doctor, and I don't like it when he rams that thing down my nose to look in my throat. I hate that stupid thing. Last time we went, I didn't see it. I thought, hey, hallelujah, what a blessing. We're getting out of this thing. You no, know, he opened the drawer and pulled it out. Huh? The problem is, is he puts this numbing stuff on and only numbs one nostril. So you spend the rest of the day thinking your nose is running. You're constantly going. Huh? Be a good day to be a boxer and get hit on that one side. You don't even feel it. Hmm? Uh, no, I don't enjoy some of the things you've got to go, with, go through. But when you've got peace, you can go through it. You can go through it. And i got good news. He's got plenty of peace because he's the Prince of Peace. Hmm? Huh? And this morning, he might have just allowed you to be here so he could show up and give you some peace. Boy, how would we make it without his peace? Hmm? And this old world, we can look at it and see all the wickedness and see these things lining up for the Antichrist. We can see all of it. But he hadn't called us out yet. So we've got to live in the midst of all this junk. It's because he wants us to have peace that we can point others to the source of our peace. His name is Jesus. Because there's so many in this world that don't realize how close eternity really is. God help us to always be in a position to look for him to show up. Because if you're longing for him, He'll show up. Uh, there's too many rejecting him. But that crowd that's seeking him, he says, seek, and you shall find. So why don't you just seek for him to show up more. And then start looking around. Because a lot of times I think he shows up and you missed him. I don't want to miss him. Do you know the day Bartimaeus received his sight was the last time Jesus went through Jericho? If Bartimaeus hadn't cried out, if he'd have missed him, he'd have died blind. You don't want to miss him. He'd been around here today. Have you, have you seen him? Have you seen him by faith? Have you heard his voice? Uh, he showed up. Don't miss him. Latch on to him because you need him. You need him today. And if he blesses us with tomorrow, you need him then. So you better get all you can get today. Because he may not show up tomorrow. So you better get all you can. He just showed up for them fellows. And he's no respecter of persons. If he showed up for them in the midst of their fear and to show them who he was, that he, that he said he was, friend, he'll show up for us. Friend, he wants to show up for you. How about it this morning? Will you let him show up in your life? Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. He spoke to your heart. The altar's open. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, why don't you come? We'd love to introduce you to him. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Maybe you need to come and thank him for showing up for you. Maybe you need to come tell him you love him. Maybe he spoke to you about something in your life he's not pleased with that he can help you with. I don't know. But you just mind the Lord. He wants to help you this morning. As they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. We're thankful for the days you've showed up in our lives. Lord, I pray for these folks in the altar. You know why they're there. Lord, some are seeking help. I pray you'd help them.
you said if any come to you, you know why cast them out. I know we use that for salvation, but that also, anybody comes to you, you'll help them. Then, Lord, I pray for those that are coming just to give you praise and thank you and tell you that, what a blessing. I pray you'd love on them. Then, Father, I pray if there's somebody here today unsaved, they'd come trust in Christ. And then, God, I pray if there's somebody here today hurting, you'd give them a balm of Gilead. Give them peace. God, you know the need of every heart. I pray you'd speak to hearts in this invitation. Get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.